Good afternoon, everybody. So, nine months of hard toil, of highs and lows, has all boiled down to this moment. The top two clubs for all but one week of the season, 80 minutes to glory. The first time in 10 years that Leicester are not part of the end of season party. Instead, the East Midlands represented by the Northampton Saints, fueled by victory in the Amlin Challenge Cup. And of course, their hordes of adoring fans. They're up against the Premiership's powerful pace setters, Saracens, picking themselves up from that Huntington Cup final defeat last week. So that European Cup final not only left Saracens empty-handed in Cardiff, it robbed Mark McCall of one of his key men, Mako Gunapola's knee injury, means a starting place at Loosehead today for Richard Barrington, a year ago struggling for a start in the Jersey team, now in the Premiership final. Moritz Bota recalled at lock to add just a little of the muscle lost by Mako's absence. Billy Bunapolo was superb against Toulon, he'll have plenty to say from number eight today. And behind the scrum, Neil de Kock rotates in at nine, partnering Owen Farrell, who's recovered well from a sprained ankle. The three quarters have a very settled look with those free scoring wingers looking to add to their impressive talent. For Jim Mallander, all eyes have been on Dylan Hartley's shoulder this week. He's decided to put his club captain on the bench, meaning that the excellent Mike Haywood continues to deputise at hooker. Plenty of solidity alongside him in that front row after a long time out. Alex Corbusiero did a fabulous job starting against Bath last Friday. And the Lions prop edges out Alex Waller for the big one. Salesi Ma'afu returns from his band for punching Tom Youngs. And the back five of the scrum remain intact. Khan Fotoali has won the tightest of calls at scrum half over Lee Dixon. And a familiar feel to the Saints' back line. No shortage of strike runners and gain line busters with the likes of North, Burrell and Foden. Well, you mentioned gain line busters and there's players all over this board, Pat, that can do that. But for me, the key matchup is against two defences that love line speed is the guys that can give the attack momentum. Billy Bonapola and Dickinson going head to head. Saracens will use Bonapola at every opportunity, off phase, first phase, off the line outs. Dickinson may be slightly tighter in, but just as destructive. And there's plenty of destructive power and pace out in the back line. The nines and tens kicking battle will be crucial for De Kock and Myler respectively. But for me, the big battle could be decided from the electricity of Goode and Foden. They may have to temper their ambition. Whichever one of these two gets turned over the most will give territory and point advantage to the opposition. So the expectation levels sky high, the two best sides in England, both with genuine attacking intent. All the ingredients there for a thriller, and those that have made the trip from the East Midlands and from North London are sure to see rugby in the raw. That's what it's all about, that gleaming silver trophy. We will have a brutal physical confrontation for sure. We have some glittering talent on display. These players the very best that English club rugby has to offer. So Northampton, a second bite at the cherry for them. Well beaten here last year, albeit a man down for an entire half. They may never have a better chance than this. Their mascot today is a very brave little boy called Lewis Gort. He's looked upon as something of a lucky charm by Northampton. Recovery from bone cancer and a recent operation for him. A special day for him and a special day for Steve Borthwick. This the last time that he will lead out his troops. Earlier this week, he spoke at the St Albans training ground from the heart about his love of the club. Some were fighting back the tears. And today you feel that he and they have to channel all that emotion or it could very well cloud their vision all eyes must be on the prize <laughs> fabulous reception as you would expect for these two proud clubs 
the atmosphere around the ground, outside the ground has been really crackling. Now it's gone up a level. So noisy here in the stadium, even here, Austin Healy think, which is tremendous. <laughs> But it's, it is, it's just about harnessing those nerves, changing them, not being nervous, not letting the butterflies overcome you, but it's excitement, making sure that you're at your absolute peak. I think you're most heightened, all your senses are going now. The guys just want to kick off and get that first hit. One of the key things that you have to remember, though, is clarity of thought. And one thing to think about over anything is J.P. Doyle is refereeing. It means at the breakdown, you might get away with slightly more. You might be able to chance your hand. And in the first five minutes, we'll see both sides trying to test him and each other out. There's Mark McCall, the mastermind behind Saracens. Terrific record he has already. And he's looking for more trophies to really ensure that they go down in history as a special team. They have achieved an awful lot already this season, but they want the silverware. So the referee today is JP Doyle, a first ever Premiership final for the 34-year-old from Dublin. At least in part a reward for the excellent calm performance in the white-hot semi-final at Franklin's Gardens two weeks ago. His assistants are Wayne Barnes and Paul Dix. Graham Hughes is our man in the truck, the television match official today. And it is time to put bodies on the line to find a fitting end to nine months of scintillating rugby. Who is the best team in the land? Northampton get us underway through Myler and the kick is charged down from Marcello Bosch. Saints on the front foot. They just didn't get the trajectory, Bosch, but interesting. How Northampton looked at where the big carriers, Vunapola was on the other side, they're making sure they're kicking away from him. They put Laws and Manoa out wide, so Borthwick had to spread out wider, knowing that there'll be targets at the kickoff. And because of the charge down, they now get the opportunity to put pressure on Brits, who wasn't throwing that well in the warm up, missed a couple, and a big first line out on his own line. JP Doyle not happy. Come down the outside. Don't the gap down the is middle, sufficient please. between the two lineouts. He ran down the middle, Steve. Scott Britz, of course, a man who came in for an awful lot of treatment last weekend, didn't he? At the hands of Craig Bird and his opposite number in the Heineken Cup final. Flattened a couple of times early on. He is a resilient character and he's found Steve Borthwick as ever. The partnership working really nicely. And Britz breaks away. Man of the match in the Premiership final a couple of seasons ago when Saracens were victorious. Setting the tone, but De Kock is taken out in the tackle. Saracens had the penalty. Saints penalised for failing to roll away. Yeah, Borthwick reacting to Foto Ali. He was perfectly within his rights. Foto Ali to come in, sack the nine. He timed his run to perfection, but unfortunately for him, players on the floor had slowed the ball down. But Brits, look at this fend right into the, the throat of Clark, and then who's he running at? The fly half, they don't want to allow Saracen's big ball carriers to run at Myler for all his strengths. Defensively, he has been tested over the years. And Burrell there not moving away, which just slowed things down for De Kock and gave Foto Alihi a free rein to his ribs. Clearance kick is a good one. Billy Vinopolo was clutching his ankle just a moment ago in rather troubling fashion. No Mako Vinopolo today. Nasty knee injury picked up in that Heineken Cup final. So Billy without his brother today. Yeah, I was just watching him there, Ali, for a few minutes. He really is struggling with that ankle. Doesn't look happy. The one play that Saracens do not want to lose is him. Brilliant, wasn't he, in that Heineken Cup final, despite the defeat, he topped the charts and carries and defenders beaten and metres gained. Sarries need him. Uh, yeah, JP Doyle, the movement, the number three saying he's went down the middle of the channel. Now, he just warned Steve Borthwick about that at the last line-out, so he gave Saracens the opportunity to get away with it once. 15. Basically, what he's asking for is that if there's a crossover of players, one of the players steps out of the line-out and the moving player goes straight through rather than stepping in and stopping the jumpers getting across. 
Nice clean take by Scott Britz from the kick from Myler. This is Alex Good under pressure again from Foito Ali'i. Good again. Saunters forward. Takes it and can't quite evade the tackle of Foden. Full back on full back. Use it! Use it! To Cock. Pops it away for Matt Stevens. The two scrum halves rotating, continuing to rotate. He and Richard Wigglesworth decided Use before it. the Premiership and Heineken semi finals which games they would each do. They were allowed to make that decision themselves. And here is De Cock with the box kick. Fumbled by Myler, but backwards. Foden. Just couldn't find the man. Casey was racing through. Here's Burrell. What to elite. Plenty of time for Alex Good to assess the options here. Billy Bonapola. Bosch. Well, Foden just shows the first glimpse of being able to open up the opposition. A mistake there from Miley, gets away with it. And Berger just steps out of the challenge and look at that line. If he's through, the tackle might have come in, but it would have been on the halfway or the 10 metre line. Just that leg drive through the side on tackle. You get so few opportunities against Saracens. Northampton will feel they need to take one. Here's Mikey Hayward. Finding Courtney Laws, big day for Hayward in place of Dylan Hartley. First touch of the ball for George North. Use it! Ma'afu is instructed in towards the breakdown. Vunapola. Oh, big hit from Dickinson. And he really set the tone, didn't he, in that semi-final a fortnight ago with that monstrous tackle he made on Logo Mulapola. Similar sort of impact then. It was always going to be a game, Ali, with lots of midfield kicking between these two sides. That's why Foden becomes so vital with kicks like this. Down the middle, he's gone. Good gathers. Ashton calling for it. And Burrell up so quickly. Nice ball though, recycled for Saracens through Bota. Preferred to Alistair Hargreaves today, just a little bit more grunt and muscle perhaps. They lost a bit of that with Mako Vunapola absent. Farrell. Wait, wait, OK, OK. Myla, Ashton bounces away. Myla still going. Here's Ma'afu. Dispatched to the sidelines, of course, for that punch on Tom Young's in the semi-final. Burrell looking for Dickinson, nice offload for Clark, who will know about here if they can work it wide. Hayward, and onwards to Lewis. George North carving a passage through. Borthwick can't grab him. It takes so many men to bring him to the ground. One leaf! Myler. in the midfield by Cubasiero. Sarri's looking to counter. Scrum advantage over. Big long chase back for George North, his first season of Premiership Rugby. And he hasn't quite got the distance on that clearance that he would have liked. Yeah, this is the break for, for a North. Really good interplay. Dickinson takes it in and just out the back door. A sensible play there from Haywood just to step inside. And then Laws gives it perfect timing. Look at this fend on Borthwick. Sit down. Great leg drive afterwards to get through, tie in those three, four extra defenders around the breakdown and give them opportunity back in the outside. But Dickinson's not just playing with the ball in hand. He's lifting his game defensively. I just get the impression Vunapola wasn't carrying at full tilt there. I just wonder whether his ankle's not right. 
but Dickinson flies in. Superb hit, setting the tone. And Northampton have the momentum at the moment, but they now have to defend a line out on the 22. And Farrell will want to assert his team's dominance here. Working with line out ball, it's slightly scrappy. And that's messy from Brits, it's been dropped. Stevens, his final game for the club before heading back to South Africa. Farrell, quick hands from Bosch on to Strattle, very well shackled by Ken PC. Both It's gone forwards and Saints look to recover it. Here they go through Foto Elite, Foden down the short side. composed from Alex Good. Austin. Guys, it's been a very frenetic start, but the problem with that is that you lose your partner of play. As the ball comes out to Myler here, loads of space to attack, loads of numbers, but all front row. They've got one, two, three, slow runners out there. Those guys getting up from rooks, not getting round the corner, leads them not being able to come and hit the ball flat. Northampton can get the ball wide, there's plenty of space for that kick over that Myler loves to the corner. There's Jim Malander. His ninth final with the Northampton Saints, it's a proud record. Myler on halfway, crossfield looking to pick out North, he has the height advantage, North gathers it, and forwards it goes. Enough men there to scavenge for Saracens. It's a tactic they've been practicing a lot in the week, Northampton the crossfield kick, and away it goes into touch. Yeah, particularly to do early on in the game, We're going already. Pushed forward by De Kock. Tricky one for Foden. Beautifully taken. But directly into touch. Yeah, particularly use that crossfield kick early on in the game to make sure that you keep the Saracens' defence on. It's a good ball off the top. Watch Burrell's line. He goes forward to hold that defensive line, give Myler a little bit more time to put the perfect kick up for North. And Good does really well Just let it go to now. compete it hard against the bigger man now. running on at full tilt. The key there is they're trying to isolate Ashton. They saw last week that Ashton's not the quickest to turn. He likes to come forward in defence, likes to pincer in from the outside. Sometimes, and most of the time, he gets that really well. But they're trying to target him with North. Charts for Vunapola, who stood out in midfield from this line out. His first real opportunity to get in. If he's needed, the Maud's going well at the moment. They've got the penalty. Saints infringing. And this should be a first shot at goal for Owen Farrell. This is the area that, that could really be the undoing of Northampton. If they, they've, they've had such good momentum early on in the game, but if they give away three, six, allow Saracens to get nine points ahead with just some little bit of bits of ill discipline. You get the impression that Farrell's not the sort of person to miss those opportunities two weeks running, and then Saracen's one of the hardest teams to pull back in from a lead. That seems to be a tactic from Northampton, though, not play too much rugby. By this stage in most games this season, they'd have had a lot more possession. They're quite happy to share it, to kick, and to they don't want to give away a penalty, but they're trying to kill the game out. They're playing for Dixon to come on, a high tempo right. late on, but if they're six or nine oh. points down, like Ben says, it's a completely different context. Farrell recovered from the ankle sprain which he suffered in the warm-up to the European Cup final. Tripped on a cable, didn't train till Thursday but apparently was chomping at the bit from Monday. A very clean strike from Owen Farrell, Saracens are on the board. points to his name in the Premiership final a couple of seasons ago. He is the driving force now in this Sarri's outfit. No longer the youngster learning his trade. He is the experienced hand on the tiller.
the Napoli, the focal point, just a little bit stuttering, not able to get up ahead of steam. Taking it on, a little bit of help from Jacques Berger. It's just been immense this season, the Namibian flanker. Tackling stats can barely be believed. Foden again underneath it. Ken Pisi. Good tackle from Brits right on the game line. Burrell, don't often see his kicking game. He's gone high and wide and straight into the arms of Good. Down the touchline he goes. Awkward for Myler. And in a way, Myler was fortunate that rolled into touch. Yeah, the ball really dug into the turf and sat up. Myler expecting it to roll on. It's a little bit of a kick to nothing from Burrell. He wasn't sure how wide North was. And Goob does really well to field and kick straight away and put pressure. On Myla coming across. One thing I've noticed is how many tackles that Saracens are falling off at the moment. Now, we all know that Saracens don't put too much on their percentage of completions because they go for the big hit. But at the moment, Northampton look like they're putting the brakes on, almost inviting the tackler to them and then sidestepping out of it. So here's the invitation from Billy Vunapola. Farrell through Barrett. Scored the try in the semi final. Burst through a nice little hole here. Here's Ashton, like a pinball over the 22 metre line. Nice attacking position here, but Saints seem to have all bases covered. Big hit from Manoa. We've seen that time and again. The ball is recycled through Foto Ali'i. Samuel's back in their own half now, and again it's Dickinson who levels him. Anticipating nicely and takes his time. 14, 14. Fight, fight. No time taken by Good. This is Farrell again. Five. Haywood. Oh, an intercept from Ashton. Burger. Oh, Barter bundled backwards. Haywood making up for things there alongside Burrell. Alan Clark looking to contest for the ball. Gate entry, gate entry, okay? Barrett again. Oh! Wow. Some big hits raining in. That was Courtney Laws. No hands, three! Good. Nowhere to go. Manoa again, manhandling him. Those two in the second row are putting themselves about at the moment. Here's Richard Barrington, the loose head. Struggling to hold down a starting place in the Jersey team around about a year ago. Saints defence, outstanding at the moment. Barrel playing for position. Strettle chasing hard. Oh, that's a fabulous take from Strettle. Textbook stuff. 13 entry. 13 entry. Oh, there we go. Entry. Northampton will have felt really in control with their defence. Big hits going in, but then excellent work from Strettle in the air. And suddenly, just a little bit of panic because Saracens are in behind them. Someone goes in. Side entry. And here's that opportunity to take it to the six points we were talking about brilliant kick perfect waiting on it and look how Strettle watches the ball gets his hands up high uses that knee to climb on PC harsh penalty PC swung his legs around then comes back through the middle I think Strettle's isolated here they do incredibly well to retain possession it's a brilliant catch in the first place but for me PC gets his legs round the other side and then comes through the middle 
JP Dawes been very hot on the breakdown early on. Maybe something that he's thought about himself before the game. His first final. I wonder whether Saracens have had a word because they got turned over at the breakdown. They wouldn't have agreed with all the decisions last week. Just wonder whether they, in their meetings and conversations with the referee, would say, look, make sure that area is refereed properly. It's also been noticeable how many players Saracens have been putting into the breakdown, often running out of players to attack with because of that fear of what happened with Stefan Armitage last week. Well, they are devastating front runners, Saracens, and they are building a tidy little lead here. 18 minutes gone, six points up. spoken a lot in midweek despite the fact there was no formal debrief of the defeat to Toulon they will have spoken about the need to come away with points from the red zone from those moments when they are in and around the 22 metre line and so far this afternoon they've done just that Oh. Tom Wood, scorer of that epic try in the 78th minute of the semi-final. Trying to lead from the front today. Manoa, he's got Courtney Laws on his shoulder. Second row working in partnership. Myler, Burrell. Still Burrell, pumping those legs. Bosch eventually brings him down. Myler looking for the short pass. He's found Corbusiero. Wood again hit hard by Bota. Myler. That looks good. Very much an assured presence at the back. Second in by Bosch. George PC with the tackle. Borthwick, head down. Release! Farrell again, looking to pick out Strettle. And he's found Strettle, and he's also found a touchline. Austin, what have you Well, just, I think Northampton amusement. will be quite dishevelled, really, but they're 6-0 down, but they've played all the rugby. This is an example of Saracens in their phase play. There's 13 players within a 15-metre area there, and as we've just seen with a cross-field kick to Strettle, it's only their aerial skills that are really getting them on the front foot. This drops back. He's got no options at all, Farrell. This is almost a kick to nothing, but it's a kick to nothing because of the way that Strettle chases it and takes the ball. Northampton have got to work as a back three to stop that threat. Fortuny, he's been caught. To Cock. Quickly up on his man. Just a little bit too far from Fortuny. Allowing Strattle to stretch his legs. 11 Premiership tries this season, but we have an offside decision. Penalties beginning to stack up against the Northampton Saints at this point. With Bosch and Farrell both capable of, from this range. So keep an eye on Sam Dickinson. He was just fractionally in front, wasn't he? Well, it was called from one of the assistants. I don't know whether it was Wayne Barnes on the far side, Paul Dix on this side, but. It was Dix, he wasn't back with, in line with play, so I presume it must have been Wayne Barnes, and that is very, very tight and could be hugely costly because at nine points changes how Northampton have to approach this game and indeed how Saracens can defend. Well, this is the toughest and the furthest of the three so far for Farrell. Oh, 
Just a little bit of accuracy sacrificed for the distance from Owen Farrell, and the score remains 6 0. Every point so precious in these big, big matches. So let's have a word with Alex Sanderson, the Saracens assistant coach. Alex, your take on things so far, you'll be delighted to be quietly building that lead. Yeah, um, as with all the big games, there's a bit of a kicking duel that occurred in the first quarter. Both teams have got good line speed, so we're looking to get the territory of which we've had the upper hand, I think, in the first 20 minutes and turn some of that pressure into points. Uh, the set piece, I'm sure, will come into the game as it develops. Uh, as will the speed of the ball at the breakdown, but at the moment we're quite happy to, uh, in, in respect to where we're playing the game and also our discipline uh, in keeping Northampton down in, their down in their half. A lot of talk, obviously, Alex, in advance of this match about the possible hangover from your lot from last weekend. Any signs that, that would concern you at this point? Or are you happy with what you're seeing? Well, 6-0, they are very happy. Uh, and there's no emotional hangover whatsoever. You know, last week, was an occasion in itself and um, we're just grateful that we don't have to sit on that for four months. We've got this opportunity to, to finish the season on a massive high and with the likes of Steve Borthwick, last game, Matt Stevens, last game, you know, we've still got a lot to play for aside from the Premiership, of course. Thanks very much, Alex. Thank you. No hangover as yet. Saints, of course, have been coming on strong in the second half, particularly in the last few weeks, and finishing their matches so strongly. That final 20 minutes is going to be fascinating. How much is in the Saracens' tank? Maybe they'll be out of sight by then. First scrummage of the afternoon. First tester for Richard Barrington in that front row. Up against Salesi Ma'afu. It's a great shot for us to be able to see who's pushing straight. You can see the right hand side of the Saracen scrum going in slightly just to protect the hooker. Barrett, Farrell on the loop. Ashton in behind. Space for Strapple. Being shepherded towards the touchline by Ken PC. <laughs> Billy Donapola cut off at the ankles by Dickinson. To Cock. Threads it through, George PC needs to be lively here, Strattles after it. PC just caught a little bit, I don't know whether his studs got caught and he couldn't turn. But they come back down his side, it's just slow to react. Perhaps he thought that his brother was slightly farther, further over. Gets down well in the end and takes the ball out with his knees. But first opportunity for Saracens, they love a short range line out. Often change things, not always the same. Keep the opposition guessing, go low to Vunapola. But Courtney Law's got himself in between the bind on Vunapola and he's got in on the ball, done really well there. Excellent defensive work from Saints and they've won the put in. Yeah, just, it's almost a get out call. They realize that Vunapola's not being marked. And then it's Stevens there who doesn't quite close the gap off between himself and the big number eight. Laws lightning fast in on the ball and he stays in there. The referee's talking to him all the time saying, you can stay, you're legal. And they collapse them all down and get the pull into the scrum. Just behind it there, Sousa's hooker has got behind it. Real breakthrough season, you feel, for Courtney Law. Seems to have come, a, have come of age, really, in this campaign. Much more responsibility for club and for country. Calling the line out, now firmly established in the England second row alongside Joe Launchbury. Many of these players, of course, heading for New Zealand with England. After this final, Stuart Lancaster will be holed up somewhere in a hotel in Auckland, watching this in the wee hours, probably through his fingers, hoping for a clean bill of health. So important to make sure it's settled for Foto Lee so they can get the best opportunity to clear. Big pressure coming on from Saracens, but Dickinson has broken away and is. Motoring up towards the 22. No, 
half forward. No, Fired, no, no nonsense. Yeah, Dickinson there just used the opportunity with all eight Saracens forwards scrummaging hard. Look at the work of Berger on that side. He gets pulled in because he's working so hard. They wheel round what the back row would think the wrong is the wrong way. The front row want to try and put as much pressure on as possible. And that gives Dickinson the opportunity to go one on one with Barrett. And he just steps through the tackle. Photo Ali does really well to take the cock off the play. The cock looking to come straight in on the line out here from Scott Britt. This is Richard Barrington. Sarri's pouring forwards. And Farrell on the front foot and spotting the gap as well. Borthwick heads back inside to the sanctity of his forwards. Polar suggestion of a forward pass, yes. And Farrell on the front foot, does that so well. Did it last week, made a break, almost put Ashton through. His ability to go from deep and spot the opportunity to get flat and through a hole on a step. It's Courtney Laws, he beats on the inside, isn't it? Courtney Laws has fallen over a couple of times in this half. I'm not sure about the boot selection, but he just gets beat on the inside. Two, come here. Saracens full of little attacking opportunities. They go long, drag the defenders back, give the ball to De Kock, who does really well to keep it alive. And then it's Farrell as the defence are scrambling, having been dragged towards the touchline to get back out into midfield. It's Farrell who spots the hole and accelerates through. Really been adding to his repertoire this season. Learned so much from his Lions experience last summer in Australia. And varying his depth a good deal and releasing his back division to very, very good effect. Saracens generally have just expanded their game plan so much in the last 18 months or so. A credit to the work done by the likes of Kevin Sorrell and Joe Shaw. An awful lot of tries have been forthcoming as a direct result. 71 in all in the Premiership this season. Second only to the team lying opposite them this afternoon. Saints holding steady this time. Ken PC brought into play and slicing through the defence. Brilliant from PC, still going. Options inside. Fabulous break from the Samoan winger, taking Northampton right into the heart of Saracens' territory. They have the advantage, there will be a penalty. A wonderful break from PC but they make the full 80 metres because of the line that Burrell runs. Shepherding the defence off. And there's a big statement, having conceded six points. They know this is a big area, but look, as PC makes the break, watch Burrell's line. He gets in front of the man, expecting the pass. Now he's looking over his shoulder at Barrett and he runs him off the ball. And that allows PC to get all those extra metres and caused the panic in the Saracens defence. And now we get the opportunity for Dorian West's training ground work to come into play. So the catch and drive, the mall is set. Five metres out, their first visit to the Saracens 22. They've got a full driving close. Penalty coming. Penalty is there. Saracens penalised, no penalties against them for the entirety of the first half hour, two in the space of around about 90 seconds. And Steve Borthwick, the man who's penalised. Into touch it goes once more, big statements here from the Saints. Yeah, big decisions as well for Saracens. I thought the good pen uh, penalty was close to being a yellow card. One more here and some you'd expect somebody to go to the bin. 
first time really that we have crowned our necks to the right hand side to see the Saints on the attack as they are now through Callum Clark. Tom Wood has his hands on the ball. Side entry 10. Side entry 10. Penalty again coming Northampton's way. They want more than that. Myler for Burrell. Popped up. Make sure, look how they throw to the back, and then they drive around the corner, which means Berger has to step in. Now Owen Farrell's playing guard. He steps in, he gets, gets done for side entry, so they know there's a penalty coming anyway. They can really? afford to really throw the ball without thinking about knock-ons, and what brilliant interplay. Two wonderful pieces of hands, first from Burrell for the offload, then Ken PC in and out in one movement, Straight in front of Foden, what a marvellous team try. A moment that Ben Foden will savour for the rest of his career. Of course, he scored a, final, uh, a try in the final here a year ago, trying in vain to launch the comeback with Northampton down to 14 men. Stephen Myler has the chance to put the Saints in front after soaking up half an hour's worth of pressure. the sharpest shooter in the Premiership. Stephen Myler nudges Northampton in front by a point. And just to go on about the team try. Because they were out the back, they've tied in all those extra defenders. Now it's a fair fight. Saracens have to make one-on-one -on -one tackles and as soon as they get the change of angle and tie in a couple of defenders, that means there's a hole wider out for Foden. A brilliant interplay means they put the ball on a plate for him. Here's Foto Ali'i, launching north, what an offload, and here's the power of the man. Again, the handling is sublime, Foto Ali'i, still they continue upfield. It couldn't last, it was too good to last. Well, Hollywood pass is coming out now. Initially, Foto Ali'i, he's so sharp around the breakdown. Pulls in the outside defender, the ball around the back, and then look at that from North, out the back door, blind pass. Unfortunately, as you said, I think the Harlem Globetrotters are safe for now. Dazzling stuff. Great handling, and all of a sudden, just a very different vibe about this final. George North in amongst it. Ken PC leaving scorch marks across the turf. Beautiful handling. Northampton have come to life. Saracens need a response now. One meter, one meter nine. Solid as a rock in the set piece. <laughs> Berger thought the ball had gone and <laughs> took his block, took his bind away ran off towards where he thought the ball was and it never came but I think JP Durrell said let's play that again in which case Berger's got away with it just the most remarkable player given the state of his knees it's a miracle that he's still playing he will try to see it all the way through to the World Cup in 2015. Oz. Well, just looking back at the try and what actually created the width. If you look as the ball comes out, PC runs a short line and that keeps 10, 12 and 13 really tight. Watch, they're unable to shift and drift. Because that happens, then Ashton has to step in from his outside channel. If he makes this tackle and the ball's not got away, it's no try. But it's a footwork of Burrell and the hands of PC creates an absolutely brilliant score. Going well here, so just... 
good refereeing again, just talking to both front rows, saying, look, I'm really happy with this, you're going really well. Just wait till I can't bind, guys. Second, Just wait, loose head. Wait. Let's wait. Come on, boys. Right. Form up. Shot that we're able to give you with this wire cam above the players to see exactly what angles those front row boys are going in at. Whether they're staying straight initially before they move in. You can see the right hand side for Saracen Stevens' side and Corbus Hierro both going in at the angle. The other side a lot squarer. Corbis Arrow on all three scrums that we've seen has really tilted his hips out to the outside. Surely, Ben, it's impossible to push if your hips aren't in parallel with your shoulders. Well, you can push, but not necessarily in the right direction. But you can see he's right across there on Stevens, but Stevens won't mind too much because he's allowed to... What he doesn't want to do is get separated from his loop, from his hooker. So he wants to be really nice and tight to Brits. And Corbus Sierra is probably getting a little bit frustrated that he can't get in underneath that sternum, and that's why his hips are going out slightly to try and pop up Stevens and try and attack Brits that way. It's taken a little, time, a little while, this one. A real tussle going on between Stevens and Corbus Sierra, England and Lions colleagues, of course. Now they're ready. Oh, Stevens has done superbly well. He just dropped his right shoulder on top of Corbus Hierro, who had gone in at the angle. And Corbus Hierro struggling to stay up. Just those couple of steps won him the penalty. You want this spider cam every week, don't you? I've never seen you this animated or excited. <laughs> Look at that scrum. Brilliant. Oh, the pushing and everything. And Farrell has pushed that down the touchline very nicely back inside the 22 looking for a big finish to this first half Saracens having taken the early lead with the couple of penalties just three premiership defeats all season Saints away when they were well beaten London Irish at home something of a surprise in February and then the defeat away to Leicester when they were underpowered resting quite a lot of players over 15 both up. One Northampton! With the Sierra told to move back, and they are all going in reverse at the moment because Sarries are controlling operations nicely. Once. Brits is the man at the tail. Use the ball! To Cop looking to pop it forwards for Barrett on the crash. They've worked it wide regardless. Strettle. Tackled by Ken Pieces. Really putting himself about this afternoon. No six. It's Callum Clark trying to disrupt possession. Just look at the numbers that Northampton have on their feet compared to Saracens, who had to go in and win that ball at the breakdown. They struggled to get any forward and momentum while well, that's the case. And Farrell back in the pocket. Thinking about the drop goal, thinking otherwise, threading the grubber through. And PC has to gather it. It will be a Saris line out. Brilliant play from Farrell. Knew that there was nothing on, stepped back in the pocket, wasn't 100% convinced he could get the drop goal away. So he switches side and puts in the perfect weighted short tactical attacking kick and forces Foto Ali to run the ball out before Ashton gets there. One last flourish, six, perhaps, six, as the first half six, draws to a close. Certainly got the platform. Yeah, they've got to a six-man line-up. Vodopola steps in to lift from the scrum half position. Means they've set up in a nice position. They want the ball back with Stevens or Brits there. They've stopped once. They're going to have to regenerate, get those legs all go together, find the weak spot. Now they're in a good shape. Vodopola's the key here. Brits needs to stay in the armchair behind him, but Courtney Laws has come through again legally. Brits getting caught by Laws, and Courtney Laws has done a job yet again for his team in the close exchanges. Invaluable contribution. 
bit of guys losing their call there in the Saracens team with the referee Good running in from fullback to remonstrate. Can't really see from that angle, but I presume JP Doyle on that side had a good view that Courtney Laws had gone in between two Saracens players. I think the reason why he was so aggrieved is as the ball went down, Dick Dickinson then just dived straight over the far side, knowing full well that, as we've seen all season, if you choke tackle someone and the ball goes to ground, there's no ensuing rook. Therefore, you can just effectively kill the ball, which is what he did. He got a few feet on the back for his... Uh, it's, Endeavor, it's but because because in the in the laws it's not deemed as a tackle, so you're allowed to go off your feet. It's deemed as a collapse more. So players don't have to roll away from a collapse more like they do at a ruck. Yeah, but I, I agree with that. But I then still don't think you can dive straight over the top and block it. So you watch this now. He does really well, Courtney Laws. He gets through. He swims through the ruck as a forward set, and the more rather he swims through, gets his hands on the ball. And then as it goes to ground, watch Dickinson. Comes round the side, and then he just folds himself, keeps going, and blocks the ball from ever coming out. I think that's something that the IRB need to look at for well, next I, year. I agree, but the referee's got it spot on yeah, by the no. letter of the law at the moment, yeah. So just 30 seconds remaining in the first half, and I think Stephen Myler will need no reminding what happened right at the end of the first half of last year's final when he took that drop out, kicked it straight into touch. Wasn't allowed to do that, and went back for the scrum. It was a penalty. Hartley was dispatched with the red card, and there were three points against them. Big ask for Dickinson here because you can see Myler stood up close. There's no way he's going to kick direct from the scrum so Dickinson's going to be asked to create a breakdown they will want it nice and safe and simple you've got to get back to where you were the first four scrums in the early scrums you went really well fight to stay high fight to stay high the early the early scrummaging wasn't on one team's line with the opportunity to turn them over on their own scrum put in Myler's drop back this time. He's got Burrell on the line, acting as a block or ready to latch on. PC on the other side, latch on to Dickinson if he picks. Photo Ali, he might go for the box kick here, but they win the penalty. Well, the onslaught was forthcoming, wasn't it, from Saris? They really went after that scrummage. One down and around. Matt Stevens looking quizzical, but this time Myler can thump it away on the full without any fear of. Retribution, and that's exactly what he does. Bringing to an end an absorbing first 40 minutes. Saracens with the early lead, thanks to Owen Farrell's boot. They had all the pressure and all the territory. And then Foden struck a team try from the Northampton Saints. Milo converting a one point game, just how we like it. Buckle up for the second 40. As Sean Edwards says, there is no tomorrow for these men. Who will find that extra gear then, that moment of inspiration that could make all the difference? The Saris have been brilliant all season. Two major finals reached, but they could be left with nothing. Saints, remember, have never won the league title. Too often for their liking, they've been the bridesmaids in the big ones. The Premiership last year, the Heineken Cup final of 2011. They feel now is their time. But Owen Farrell and the rest of his side will feel very, very differently. Next score, absolutely critical. George North. Buzzing, wasn't he, in that opening 40. Keen to get his hands on the ball, keen for involvement from the extremities of the pitch. Foden hasn't taken it, but Clark has. And he's ushered into touch. A good recovery from Saracens. Bit of confusion when the ball went up. Vonapola didn't want to come and climb for it. And those retreating were, were waiting from the man at the back to come and make it his own. But Foden got in there, tapped it back to Clark, but they did well to put him into touch and get a pretty good result with an attacking line out early on. There's the try scorer. 
Bradford look again, tapping it back forward to Cock. This is Barrett and Bosch doing just that to Stephen Myler. Billy Bunapola, nice hands, Farrell on the loop. Here goes Ashton, slithering away through. Good start from Saris. Stevens hit hard by Manoa. Onside, onside, boys. Barrett. Berger. Excellent tackle from Tom Wood. He was waiting for it. Yeah, just look how narrow Saracens are, though. They're playing everything down the middle of the field at the moment. Ashton coming out wide. They turn the ball over. The problem with that, Ali, is that if you haven't got any width, then you've got a lot more defenders directly in front of you. Everybody gets a head-on tackle rather than a side low tackle. Just look here, though. Saracens used Bunapola a lot as the crash-up last time. This last week, this time they use him round the corner. But as all those three defenders step in, he gives the ball back out to the run around the corner, trying to get those extra few meters. But no, someone who wasn't getting any extra meters with Ward. Sorry, really was Berger hit hard by out, Ward David. and Dickinson. Some of the collisions this afternoon contest. have just been absolutely seismic. Wait till I call each face. Sorry's just not getting the joy on the gain line at the moment. Credit to the Northampton defence. See again, Corbe Sierra gone. He's almost facing his own post. He's trying to wheel that round. Myler, low trajectory. That's good. Always seems to be just where he needs to be, and a lovely little step. But to the way to Berger was that forwards. Referee's happy. Bosch goes on. Inside the 22 now. Barrett. A little show. Tackled by Ma'afu, but wriggling an extra couple of metres forwards. And Fountain at least of slowed Saracens up, but Berger, uh, Boto, I should say, carries hard. The cop running out of support. It's a free play for Saracens. Haywood, not listening to the referee, played the ball in the ruck. And here they can really have a chance to try something as Alex Good does just that, and then the ball falls for Myler just as well, because Saris look to be away. They'll come back for that penalty. I think Northampton would have been slightly aggrieved had that pass stuck. Players weren't taken out by Borthwick. They get away with it in terms of seven points, but opportunity for Farrell to put his team back in front. Lovely balanced runner, Alex Good, really added Steve, some devil to, to his nice running game. Awkward man Number to pin two, down these days, a wicked swerve on him. One of those will be heading to New Zealand after this match is over. So Farrell it is again, from quite close range this time. and pairs of eyes turn their attention to this very impressive 22-year-old. Who drills it straight through the middle. And the Saracens now are back in front. Just oh, we heard Alex Anderson saying during the first half that our game plan is all about playing field position and picking up points while we're down there. And Saracens are doing that perfectly at the moment. They're not wasting lots of energy in trying to attack. But perhaps they feel as the game goes on, if they've got a slight cushion, Northampton will have expended a lot of energy. So the restart claimed by Borthwick. The rest of his teammates gathering in around him. They'll be wanting to produce the goods for their skipper. Such an influential presence for Saris, so selfless, totally dedicated, full respect from everybody at the club. Well, just take him back in. 
Yeah, JP Dool had called that the ball had been taken back in. It was caught outside the 22 metre line, and then the tackle came in. It's just about their foot position. And that's it. De Kock just arguing with JP Dool. And he did say it. And here's the here's the mix-up. Borthwick took it outside and then was driven back inside. Wood. Laws on the peel. Nine. Burrell. North. Bouncing off the tacklers. Keeping it alive. Vitally, Ma'afu from close range. Saints turning up the heat. Foto Ali'i, Myla, Corbusier, Flatten. What a tackle that was. Myla again, Saints come again. Long pass to nobody. That's Corbusier has stayed down after that hit. We saw the positives of the Saracens' defence with Berger's hit cutting his man down but Austin pointed out this play that Northampton had done against Saracens earlier in the year got exactly the same man George North running out wide taking advantage of Barrett I think it was stepping out of the line and then as it comes back look at this hit from Berger cuts his man down that's Perfect technique. Big, big tackle, but North had the opportunity there in the wide channel. PC was free on the right wing, he was walking in. Just got the ball, and then Myler sees the space, but there's no bodies out there. Luther Burrell needs to be out in that wide channel. That is the pass, but just ran out of support runners. He just sensed the more they can get George North into this game, the more advantage they're going to get. Carrying over the game line, he's almost impossible to stop. He is the game changer, isn't he? There he is, the Welsh international. Just 22 and already a Grand Slam winner. He's been in a World Cup semi final and he's been part of a successful Lions tour. Extraordinary. Bertha claims it for Saracens. There's Kelly Brown. Brilliant in that semi final, wasn't he? Brown against Harlequins. By photo Ali, he kept his foot in touch as well. I'm sure. For me, this is, a penalty pen. this is a penalty. He gets pushed before he's anywhere near the ball by Ashton. Does incredibly well to still take the, the catch. But this game's going to come down to fine margins, penalties here and there. Another vital line out in a very promising position for the Northampton Saints, whose fans are in good voice now. Taken down by Northampton, use the ball! Haywood has it. That's surprising. JP Doyle wants to see some action now. Northampton trying to get back to that driving play, being told to use the ball. And they have to go digging for it. Just been slowed right up, haven't they? Foto Eliti turns back inside to find Corbusiero. Flying into the tackle, knees up, Myler for Haywood again. Berger comes racing out of the line. Haywood's done well to stay on his feet and move a further three or four metres inside the 22. Myler, crossfield grubber, it's a tricky one. And now it's good, has it covered. They're just trying to exploit that gap in but behind it. That time, good was the only player in backfield covering of any description. Both wingers up in the line. They just didn't do enough to pull good out of position before that kick goes in. Tom Wood not using his arm in the tackle. And Saracen's breathing a pretty hefty sigh of relief. They're under the pump at the moment. There's Richard Wigglesworth warming up. He'll come on at scrum half relatively soon, I would have thought. Very much a, a job share, a 
affair in the scrum half berth for Saracens. Jackson Ray coming on as well. Be really interesting to see which player he replaces. Can they keep Ronapola on the field? Hasn't been at his best today. He had that ankle problem early on, but he's one player that can change things. Line out is over, over 15. Walcott has it at the bottom of all of that. JP Doyle accepting that he was a little bit quick on the whistle there. Interesting one is Steve Borthwick. Is he fit to carry on? We know he's had pectoral muscle injuries, which, you know, had it been the middle of the season, he probably wouldn't have played the last two weeks. Hardry's warming up. Both themselves not had an awful lot of game time in the last couple of weeks after his injury when he pulled out of the semi final. But do you risk taking both rocks to put that man on when you know that your captain alongside him? One big hit in the wrong place, he might have to leave. Good decisions to be made for Mark McCall. And a decent drive at the scrum. Ginopola shielding it for Decock. Farrell goes low. Here's George Northup. Spotted some space in behind the Sarri's defence. There's good cover though from Farrell and Decock. And Farrell, I think took one look at who was racing towards him for a minute I thought he was going to chance his arm but he decided it being north in his face the best thing to do was to get rid here come the replacements then Hargreaves Jackson Ray and Richard Wigglesworth and it is Botha who's going to make way in the engine room Berger's going as well as yeah, Berger too oh, right. Photo Ali, he has gone for Dixon as well for Northampton. That's a real statement now that they're going to change the way they play. High tempo. He made a massive impact, Dixon, in the semi final against Leicester. He's going to be need to do the same today. He really offers the silver service, doesn't he, Lee Dixon? Sped the ball away from the breakdown. That doesn't look terribly straight from Haywood. Once. Well, Once. Woods in a really good position there, but they're not getting any go forward. JP Dorn making them play the ball earlier than they want to, and that means they're getting hit in midfield. Yeah, Burrell taking the full brunt of it there. George North taking everybody on by himself. Haywood for Tom Wood. Myler. Saracens smothering in defence. The Wolfpack bearing their teeth. Callum Clark drives into his opposite man, Kelly Brown. Dixon. Laws. Dragging Marcello Bosch along with him. Cuba Sierra trying to bump off Kelly Brown. Saints patiently going through the phases. PC. Long ball out for North over the top of Ashton. North up against Good, who tackles his man. Great counter up by Ashton to slow that ball down. Manoa inside the 22. Saints need some points from this pressure. PC hit hard by Ashton. Advantage, leave it on the ground, Northampton, leave it on the ground. And Sarri's had turnover ball. And Wigglesworth clears it out of immediate danger. Foden. Sparkle and adventure can he conjure. He's been hit by his old mate Ashton. Leave it. Dixon over the top. North bearing down on it. Alex Good is there again. Marley will send it high once more. Nicely contestable, but nobody bar Wigglesworth anywhere near it. Ball through and a mix up with Farrell. That's gone forwards. So backwards, says JP Doyle. I think the Saints fans at Tottenham are not in agreement with that decision. Foden. North again. Carving through. Oh! And straight into Farrell. There will be some damage from that collision. 
Dickinson straightening. Needs some support. Three down play. Hands on the ground first. Burrell. Long pass over the top. Laws on the outside. Endless possession here for Northampton Saints. Tom Wood takes it on. Will the down burst? Burrell. Sarri's contesting hard and contesting very, very well. A really brave defence from Saracens. A lot of them out on their feet now. They've had to scramble like mad there. Some of the collisions going in. Ashton putting in two, three big hits. George North carrying. They get the ball in his hands and it just opens up on that inside step. Nothing wrong with that. They both go for the tackle and the charge. Farrell does really well to get head on to his man. And the force of the collision bounces them both backwards. So more replacements this time from the Northampton Saints. And it is the club skipper Dylan Hartley who is onto the field. Something of a redemption day for him after his red card in last year's final. And Alex Cubisiero replaced by Alex Waller. James Johnston also coming on for Matt Stevens, who is finishing his English club rugby career. Admitted to just the smallest of gentle cries on Thursday as he left his teammates at training. I think what we saw there from Dixon, actually, the first period of play, they went through 14 phases. That means Saracens have just walked 30 metres to this line-out. They defended valiantly, but it's really taken it out of them. Complaints we understand from the Northampton bench about Sarri's tackling without the arms as Billy Vanapola is launched over halfway again. Kick by two, legal. PC calls for the mark. To be fair, I saw the same complaints from the Saracens bench about exactly the same problem. A lot of the time, although we've got to see the arm wrapped up, the intensity of some of the hits, as the collisions made with the shoulder, people are just bouncing out and you can't get your arm round in time. 25 minutes left of this final. Two points in it. Who's going to come up with the goods? Who's going to claim that prize? Jackson Ray on in the back row for... Jacques Berger now, Chris Wiles is waiting as well in the wings. Yeah, as you said, Berger told to go and em empty the tank defensively. Jackson Ray, slightly more of an attacking player. Likes to carry, stay on his feet through the contact. That's Mr Hardridge claiming the ball for Sarri's at the line-out. Brits, who started the game in such busy fashion. Six away! Farrell under pressure from Burrell that may well have come off Burrell's leg it's gone one bounce into touch and the line out has been awarded to Northampton so no contact made with Luther Burrell well, what a first throw back from injury for Dylan Hartley. Paul Dawson has come on, so too Christian Day. So Callum Clark is making way. And so is Samu Manoa. Here's Dylan Hartley straight into battle. And it's bouncing around, it's been taken in by Saracens. Here they come, having stolen the line out ball. Barrett. Lovely arcing run from Farrell. Huge collisions now. Brits taken by two or three Northampton defenders who have been manning the barricades to excellent effect. I recognise that arm guard on the ball. I think it was Dickinson originally on it. 
Brits comes tight. Here's the initial ball. It's Wood who can't pick it out of the air. It's flat back on the Saracen side, and then as Brits came in on that tight angle to the breakdown, it was a really good quality shot from the guards around the Northampton defence. But because he came so close, it meant that players just had to stand up from the breakdown. Saints in possession then, midway between their 22 and the 10 metre line. Hartley desperate to make up for all that time he's had to stand around on the touchline. His first appearance in nine weeks. Here they come. Hartley on the counter. Big overlap here if they can work it wide. Burrell has spotted North in space. North will set off for the try line. Three good. Dragging his way up to and beyond Chris Ashton. Myler. Foden. Five metres out. Myler again. Little brother kick through. Confirm this through the television match official. But Myler has come up with a delicious little grubber. And George PC looks to have the touchdown. Yeah, PC called it, which gives me the impression he probably knows he's got to stay on side. Sometimes when you're reacting to the 10 and you you're not sure when the kick's coming, PC points and calls for this. Check onside offside for the kick, please. Onside offside. Okay, onside, we'll have a quick look. It's a really nice pass from Burrell to put North into space. Then I thought Ashton had really worked himself into the breakdown to slow it down as much as he could. But he gave everyone the opportunity on the blind side. Is he onside? Yes, he is. He's onside. onside. What a brilliant kick from Myler this is. It's PC pointing for the ball. Does he ground it? Oh, it's a nice try. JP. He's onside. He's onside. He was onside. Clearly onside. Okay, yep. PC the elder. Sending Northampton fans into delirium here at Twickenham. How vital might that prove? Perfectly weighted, wasn't it? Stephen Myler, who has been thriving with the responsibility of the number 10 shirt for Northampton Saints, just getting better and better. And here looking to add the extras from not quite the touchline. Sweet, sweet strike from Stephen Myler. Jim Mallander could hardly watch, but it is now a five-point advantage that his side hold, with 20 minutes of the final remaining. Well, back to the moment. The territory in this half, which allowed them to play down here. They'll want to do exactly the same and try and get in range, force a penalty and take it out past one score. So he's having to dig deep now. Touched in flight off the boot of Stephen Myler. Here comes Billy Vunapola. He'll be in no mood to mess around, just trampling over the opposition. It was PC who eventually felled him. Ashton all by himself. And that had to be the right option. Ben Foden struggling to stay on his feet. Those two, of course, used to work beautifully in tandem together for the Northampton Saints. Chris Ashton has been in prime form. It's been taken quickly, and here goes Dixon. Oh, he's found a little way through as well. Dixon's still going. Burying his way through like a little mole. 
the wrong side, that's a good one. North chasing, not taking cleanly, Ashton was not offside, says the referee. 11 entry tackle. Now Saints are caught offside, so the advantage is with Sarries. Jackson Ray. Cut down by Tom Wood, Wigglesworth, away for Farrell. Danger here for Northampton, Alex Good. surely that was forwards. Wiles is away, inside ball from Wiles for Farrell. from Saracens, but what about that pass? Farrell's cracked up as he's gone over. But JP Dahl happy that the ball was not forward. He's given the score. Well, I'm astounded he hasn't got to at least have a look. Fair play to him. He's backed himself. I haven't got a problem with that. Northampton fans and players may well have if this is forward. This will give us a great angle as it comes out. Jackson Rain takes the ball in. They get a quick rook. And then the shorter numbers, Northampton on the far side. Good pass here. Oh, it looks forward on that. That looks quite a way forward. I'd like to see it again, but this will give us a great angle. There's the line, there's the tackle. It's a mile forward. Mile forward, isn't it? Absolute mile forward. And Northampton will be livid. It won't change the celebrations in the Saracens camp. Farrell being down with cramp means that Alex Good is going to have this shot at goal from the touchline. He's actually got a better kicking percentage than Farrell. As you see, he comes through, gets the ball in the right hand, tries to force it through. You can't see from that angle, but the two being seen prior to it. You can see which way his fingers went. JP, it's great. Are you happy or do you want to review? See, that angle so looks a lot better than the other two. Are you happy or do you want to review? Yeah. We do need to review it. Okay. A very significant intervention from Graham Hughes, the television match official. This could be a reprieve for Northampton. Well, it will be, and the Saracens fans will go ballistic because the try has been given. Okay. The penalty. It's not just a little bit forward, it is forward, it's considerably forward. You can argue about the momentum, his angle of the tackle may look it may make it look slightly worse. And can you play the full speed as well? JP See that? looking for another angle on it. The angle there, Ali, looks not too bad, but this is the angle that gives it away. OK, Graham, I'm it's happy to make a decision on that. OK. OK, he's trying to do it with one hand and it's cut, it's, his hands are going forward and the ball's come forward out of his hand. Yes. OK, thank okay. you. One hand, the ball's come forward his hand. The roar tells you everything you need to know about the way Northampton feel. Saracen's disconsolate. Farrell has been denied. The TMO trial was brought in to stop injustices and I think in that respect we've got to applaud the TMO Graham Hughes for overruling the referee and stopping an injustice and the Saracens fans will not like it the Saracens bench won't like it but the right decision has been made so the Northampton Saints have now been penalised, I think, for a side entry. This is the celebration from Farrell. There was a little check, wasn't there, from the Saracens 10 before he booted it away and did himself a, an injury. Charlie Hodgson's on in his place now. Borthwick really getting to his force. This is where he comes into his own as a leader because that dislocated expectations, thinking you've scored. And now he's got to raise his troops, and they've got a good opportunity with an attacking line-out to do just that. They'll probably use the drive early with put the pole at the back. He might break out. Yeah, 
well set. The ball is secure. And Barrett providing the dummy run. This is Marcello Bosch. Lovely balance to his running. Always looks classy, has time on the ball. The Argentinian international Hargreaves stopped in his tracks by Dickinson. Brits picked up by Borthwick and swarmed upon by James Wilson, who's onto the field now for Northampton. Hodgson again, potentially forwards, but Billy Bonaparte is away. And then the ball is stolen by PC. It's back in the arms of Wiles. All hands on deck here for Northampton. Saracen's just a couple of metres away. Jackson Ray. Cut down low by Tom Wood. Wigglesworth. Hodgson looking to spread it wide. Brits. Brilliant tackle from George North. Sensational tackle. Release and roll. Danger averted for the moment as far as Northampton are concerned, but Surrey still have possession. Wood's defence in the last couple of phases have been immense. A hand went over the top there from Christian Day. A little tap forwards, Luther Burrell thought he was in. And they're in trouble, Northampton, as well. They're not wrapping defensively, so they're not getting enough players to the far side. We saw it with Billy Vonapola and his carry, unable to get down the channel. And that's because they're well and truly short of numbers on the far side at every single phase. Yeah, they get that one-on-one -on, -one on the outside shoulder. There's no way Myler's going to be able to bring Bonapola down. Unfortunately, for Saracens, the retreating piece, he just gets his hand in there. And then what a tackle from George North. Brits almost gets it up into the looping player. That's Kelly Brown. Not done, Daisy. And it had to be bang on the money, didn't it, from George North and... He was invited to tickle the ribs, but the fatigue that both players have been able to affect on the opposition with the quality of the tackles and the quality of their carrying is meaning this game is opening up nicely. And with five points in it, still plenty of time to play. It's anyone's game. They're in good voice, this lot. The atmosphere is absolutely crackling now. All those weeks of hard slog, those very, very wet Friday nights, as every one of them seemed to be. They're all just a distant memory now. Sarah Elgin is with Jacques Berger. Um, I am indeed. Um, right, Jacques, a quick question. I mean, the try was given and then the decision was reversed. So just your reaction, if we can, uh, from that decision. Yeah, obviously disappointing. You know, uh, you see the driving score and you see it awarded and uh, then it gets look, turned back. But uh, that's, that's a decision that goes against you in the finals. Some will go for you. That, that one wins against us. And uh, we've got another opportunity here. We're just going to make sure we capitalise on this and, uh, and uh, score the try. I mean, the game's opening up quite nicely now. Five points in it. What's needed? Just composure, you know. We've got to make the right decisions. Oh. And we're going to make sure our discipline is good. Um, uh, it's it's getting really intense there, you know. There's a lot of decisions going to go for you and against you. And, if you keep your discipline very well and, and make sure this is a good for you, then, um, then you'll be in the right areas of the game. My goodness me, we have seen an almighty tackle here from Laws on Charlie Hodgson. It was a Courtney Laws special. Last season's final featured two monstrous hits on Toby Flood, and Charlie Hodgson knows exactly how Flood felt then. That is going to sting in the morning. If that was on Crime Watch, we'd all be complaining. The old man beaten up by some rough okay, youth. Let's go. Come on, let's play let's go. But fair play, Charlie Hodgson. He bounced straight back up. He wasn't going to let anyone know how much it hurt. I think he's having a little wry smile to himself, just counting the ribs with no one looking. 33 years old. Still one of the very best tens in the league. And resilient too, as he has just shown everybody. Amazing what Sanatogen does for you, isn't it? <laughs> Off on his saga cruise this summer. You're on that one as well, aren't you, Ben?
What a last quarter of an hour we've got for you here. A five-point game. The temperature is rising all the time at Twickenham. Stakes so high. And the body's beginning to feel it right now. Adrenaline coursing through their veins. Was that clear message? Stop that. Sarri's in an excellent position here, making sure that they don't feel sorry for themselves after that Farrell try was disallowed. And the wheel's gone against the way Bonapolo would have wanted. So the back row for Northampton are there to make the tackle. Hodgson for Barrett, the battering ram. Myler doing the tackling. Anxious moments for those two in our BT box. Fenter and McCall watching on. Billy Bonapola wrapped up well by Christian Day, but he's presented it. Hodgson again. Lovely crisp passing. Barrett, good. Ashton, Wiles! Five metres short. And the ball is loose. Who's going to claim it? It's Brad Barrett. Saracen's very, very close. They need this so badly. Hodgson, Billy Bonapola. Route one. Options each way for Wigglesworth. He's gone the wrong way, surely. Hodgson, brilliantly tackled. Six scrapping for the ball on the ground, and they won the penalty. You want a defining moment. You want a defining moment in the game. That breakdown, Dylan Hartley off the bench. Watch the counter up. He comes right through the middle. Sensational turnover. Watch this as Charlie goes to ground. Looks like Saracens will retain it. In comes Hartley. Gets back to his feet. Just gets that little gap in the rook. Allows the support runners to get through. Brilliant by the England hooker. Brilliant by Hartley. Another older England man, Charlie Hodgson. How good has his passing selection been since he came on? Got caught there. But he's finding holes, and he, in particular, he's finding holes for Billy Bonapola. Can we get a Saracens medic, please? Can you please help Billy? Oh, the, reason, the, reason why, the reason why he's finding all those holes, Ben, is that Northampton aren't working around hard enough on the blind side and defence. We take a look back earlier on. Look, good tackle in the midfield made on Scott Britz, but then yeah, look at EJP, all these numbers yeah. that Northampton have got. They've got, look, seven players. Those guys, they've really got to start working and make sure that they get to that far side because as we play it on, if this ball comes out and it's fast, they're defending no one in front of them, but you've got three on about six on the far side. The Saracens, they've got to keep working. Their legs will be burning. Their lungs will be out of oxygen. But there's something big at stake here. The last 15 minutes, they have got to try so hard now. They've got to dig deep. So... JP Doyle is asking Graham Just Hughes, the television the match official, for Just a trying review to find of it. an incident involving Nothing Brad there, Barrett. Just trying to find it. Bloodied and bruised as usual. And we will wait to see whether anything can be found. Brad Barrett, very much the midfield organiser, the fulcrum of the Sarri's defence. Myler did well to bring Wiles down on the touchline there, didn't he? And there is Barrett. OK, Graham, from what I'm seeing, 21. 21. They've come... I think what he's arguing is that he was barged prior to the ball, he could have got the offload. I think they were both going six of one, half a dozen of the other. No, I, no, it's a really no, good tackle no, by Myler. Yeah, tw Dixon's trying to get to yeah. the tackle, isn't he? I don't think there's anything in that. And Brad Barrett won't like it, but JP Doyle has made his decision. And it is Wilson who will launch it. Very good touch finder as well, almost up to halfway from the Kiwi. Something of an all-rounder in the Northampton ranks. They started him all across the back division. 
this very much a time for leadership and Steve Borthwick knows he has to make his presence felt now. Oh, backed off, they did that in the semi-final. It's one of those difficult areas for the referee, the law says no more has been made. But they try and give the attacking side the benefit of the doubt as much as they can because the spirit of the game says yeah, you should exactly. compete. And the principles of the game is that you have a competition but you can't transfer the ball back away from your front man. You're allowed to go and keep driving towards and engage those front guys, but you can't push the ball to the back early, and that's why Saracen's got the penalty there. Ten minutes left. Jackson Ray securing the ball. Nasty one for Wigglesworth, he did well. And he's Barrett again on the crash ball. Hodgson. Wigglesworth, Saris again and again and again, stopped on the gain line, Phil Darrison this time with the tackle. Barrett, good, Bosch with the dummy, inside Wilson. They have the penalty. Northampton refusing to move away from the tackle area, but Saris come forwards again. Safe in the knowledge that they've got the shot at goal, Jackson Ray. Wigglesworth, Barrett, upended. Penalty. Back they go. Big decision for Borthwick here. Trust their driving ability, it's wide out anyway. And they're going to put it into the corner. They're after the try. Foul off the field. Hodgson, the goal kicking option. But these are the times when Steve Borthwick looks to exert his authority. Yeah, the real danger here for Northampton is Scott Brits at the back of the driving wall. If you allow him to break off, if the, if the drive doesn't get there, he's so dangerous. We saw in the very first game of the season here at Twickenham, it's called two tries from driving balls this far out. And it is the skipper who takes the ball and Brits is in control, although Christian Day is doing a very good job of disrupting possession. Hodgson, Bosch, called in two minds, but still going and Myler attached to him. They go to the short side and the battering round that is Vinopola. Wigglesworth pops it up. Kelly Brown straight into Waller. Hodgson again. Little dart from the replacement fly half. Wiles for Jackson Ray running a nice line. All Saracens at the moment. It is all on the line here at Twickenham. Through Brits and on to Bosch in the corner. Maybe that was forwards too. Saracens are celebrating and JP Doyle is awarding the try. The resilience shining through and Saracens somehow producing the fireworks. And JP Doyle had a pause, I think he probably looked to Wayne Barnes, who was in the best place. And as they come around the corner, that extra phase actually means Northampton get the players around there, but that man Brits, a little bit of footwork, Ties in the outside defender, George North, and this time, the round-the-back pass. That's absolutely brilliant from Brits. Yeah, and it's North, he doesn't need to step in, the tackle's been made inside him. Let the tackle be completed, always guard your outside channel unless you're 100% sure that ball's not getting away. Well, it was a try for the Argentinian. But he has an awful lot to thank his hooker for. Scout Brits with another dazzling bit of skill. Scores on level. And Hodgson, with his first kick of the game, can take Saracens in front. And he has done just that. No! Inside edge of the post. 
People will talk about Brits' offload in that try. But it's his footwork which creates the opportunity. We see that ball so close, just a lick of paint away from sliding over. How much will that cost Saracens? Charlie Hodgson smiling, but not smiling on the inside, surely. Scores are level, six minutes of the match remaining. See Bosch not wanting to go past the 22 there, which means they could kick straight to touch. And Wigglesworth fires it away. These are nervous moments for everybody at Twickenham. For Brendan Fenter and Mark McCall, who have staked so much on this Saracen side, for all of the wider squad, for Nigel Ray, who poured his millions into the club, and for Saints as well, who have yet to lift the English League trophy. That wasn't straight from Hartley, but on we go. Dickinson. Tom Wood, who's been a giant this afternoon, putting himself about, heroic in defence. Wilson trying to create some space for Foden. Tackle 23, good man. First bit of possession in a while for Northampton. Dowson on the ball. They had to wait their turn. The ball is available, play the ball. Nice inside ball from Myler, but. Saracen's alive to it, and Alistair Hargreaves makes the tackle. Hartley driving his team on, fueled by the hurt and the disappointment of last year's final. Christian Day, a Premiership winner with Sale back in 2006. Dickinson, his first real season of Premiership rugby, but he's given up the penalty. All Saints have as a whole. Flying over the top at the right. Saints have really been penalised at the breakdown. That's 11 penalties now, 12 penalties. This one could be tailor made for Marcello Bosch, but instead it's Hodgson who's going to tuck it in close to the 22 metre line. Dickinson chopped with that tackle from Bosch. Bosch does really well to get up and make enough of his nu nuisance of himself that Myler can't get in and shift Brits. But not make it too obvious, so the penalty's given against him. Good attacking position, this for Saracens. Brits picks out Hargreaves. Hodgson. Has Ashton tracking on the inside. Saints so looking for the steal. Brits again. Working those magical feet of his. Hodgson. Ooh, very close to the edge, but Bosch has it and Wales is away. Seven metres out. Saracens turning up the heat all the time. Hodgson, Brits on the dummy scissors, Barrett pops it away for Alex Good, trying to carve out some space. Ashton back inside, heroic defence from those in green. Hodgson again, Bosch, just shaking off the attentions of Waller. Billy Vonopola, one more charge. Hargreaves. Two and a half minutes on the clock. At what stage do they think about the drop goal? Not now, it's Northampton ball and Tom Wood knows exactly what he's going to do with it. Throw it onto his shin. That's what he's going to do. I'll be to connect him with that. George North was away. Any back with the ball in hand there, that is down in the set in the Saris 22. And North is sprinting onto it. What a turnover by Dixon though. Yeah, Hargreaves accelerates gets through the tackle, but it means that Dixon's there first. Latches onto the ball, uses the weight of the Saracens players coming in, knocking him off the ball to take the ball with him. And as you said, Oz, that goes down the middle of the field.
It's one hell of a foot race. And we could be headed for extra time. It would be the first time in Premiership history that that has happened. Level at the moment. 90 seconds on the clock. Hargreaves. JP Doyle doesn't like it. It's a huge, huge decision by JP Doyle. Because now we get that momentum swing. He's right, goes straight down. Hargreaves side. It always looks worse the further back from the hooker the throw is. It's been a lot wonky this afternoon. It has, but that tended to be at the front of the line out. You do find with, with referees that it's the stuff that looks bad that they'll go with. And now a really big scrum for Myler. Oz, what are you thinking as the 10 here? In the air, or I'm keep hold of it. I haven't had any territory. I've been in my own half. Let's try and get back behind Ashton. Too long. Kick the ball behind Ashton all day long last week. That's what I'd be thinking. Get the ball down into Coffin Corner and hopefully get an attacking line out or a defensive one in the Saracens 22. This is now about not making a mistake, not giving away a penalty, and applying pressure and territory. The first area they've got to not give away a penalty is here at the scrum. Saracen's attacking hard. The referee is going to be patient and calm. Northampton players will ask him to make sure Saracen stay straight and don't run round. The lungs are busting and the heart is pumping right now. Charlie Hodgson will no doubt be reflecting just a little bit on the conversion that hit the inside edge of the post that would have assured them victory by now instead the clock is red time is up one last play before we head into extra time Saracens turning the screw at scrum time Darrison has to fall on it Sarri's competing hard Tom Wood carries it up. They'll be looking for the penalty that could seal the deal. Dixon pops it over the top. George North chasing through. Ashton safely underneath it. But there is a giant winger on top of him. It's going to be extra time. 23 rounds of Premiership action. 80 minutes of no holds barred rugby here at Twickenham. And we are headed for extra time in the Premiership final. 14 points apiece, all of it, live here on BT Sport. Don't go away. Oh, but for a layer of paint, Saracens could have this in the bag. The conversion was missed, 14 apiece, and for the first time in Aviva Premiership history, we have extra time, 10 minutes apiece, a minute break, and Matt Dawson, you know what it's like winning big competitions. Let's hark back to that World Cup, extra time. How tired are these guys? Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the, I mean, there's the, there is the difference. There's no time to worry about that. There's no time to... To think about what has gone, you've got a very quick turnaround here. The players are going to embrace, they're going to get in a huddle. The probably skipper is going to be trying to focus the minds because this 10 minutes is going to go in a blink. It's about a drop goal, it's about a penalty that is going to decide this game. You've got to have that mentality. It's about two teams who are absolutely banjacks. The hits have been absolutely huge. 20 more minutes of rugby to come. Sarries, two more fellas on the bench, two front rowers, Tom Stevenson for the Saints. They're their only fresh legs. We're set to go, extra time, history's been made. Who's going to win this one? Ali Eakin, all yours. Well, we promised you drama. We promised you rugby in the raw. And the players are delivering that in spades right now. The first time in Premiership history that we've needed extra time to separate the two sides. There will be 10 minutes each way. If they're still tied after those periods, then the winner will be the team that scored the most tries in the game, including extra time. And if they still can't be separated, there will be a place-kicking competition. 
and I think everybody in the stadium, well, most people in the stadium, I'm right in saying Austin will probably hope that we don't have to decide it via a place kicking competition. Oh, you're no, quite I, for it, you want it. I want to see it, yeah, but <laughs> I have to say also that uh, Aid, who does our stats for us at BT Sport, he called it. He put in his notes that he was so closely matched in terms of their stats that he expected a 16 all draw. He was two points out, so we can't take all the slaps on the back, Robert. Yeah, 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 doesn't yeah, know what he's up. talking about. Dear, dear. Work to be done, mate. Important thing for the for the captains in in those huddles they've just had there is to make sure, as Austin said, five minutes before the end of the game, the danger is now you stop playing and you wait for other people to make mistakes. You want to be installed into your team, play in the right areas, but keep playing. Go up a gear. Alex Goods gathers it in and he sent that very high but not terribly far so what was the what was the mindset in the the world cup final all those years ago ben what what did martin johnson tell you in that little huddle because clive woodward was told to back off wasn't he well yeah but he was his point was just to keep doing what you're doing it hasn't sort of come off but if you, someone had given you scores level against australia with 20 minutes to go to win the World Cup, we would have bitten their arm off. Keep doing what we're doing. Our game plan was obviously around getting Johnny Wilkinson into position to get those drop goal opportunities. And I'm sure these teams will have, will have crossed their mind when the, if the game was tight with a few minutes to go, their best opportunity of scoring three points. Dixon launching Burrell straight at Hodgson. Here's Myler missing out George North. Foden on the outside. He scored the try in... The opening half for Saints. Saris have competed well, though, and they've secured the ball. Billy Vunapolo, who's got through so much work this afternoon. A quick thought for Stuart Lancaster, who's in New Zealand right now watching this, hoping and praying that no more of his England players are injured as they have to go the full distance. Three tests against the All Blacks coming up over the course of the next month. Kelly Brown's unlucky there, he latched onto the ball and Myler went off his feet trying to clear him. Got away with it though. Use it! Dixon goes high, Good has called for it. Christian Day, never a half-hearted challenge. And the penalty is Northampton's. Sarri's preventing release. And Milo will be licking his chops at the prospect of this. And good goes up, takes the ball. And who's the first man in on it? Courtney Laws latches on. They can't move him away, and then uh, McCall, disgusted. So an awful lot of pressure resting on Stephen Myler. He's been enjoying that pressure recently. He has been playing his very best rugby recently. He has been kicking quite beautifully recently these are rather different dynamics with that yeah. shiny silver trophy on the line Concentrate the kick off and get back out of their own danger zone. Not give Saracens the opportunity to respond immediately. Not gathered clean by either side. But Saracens have been awarded the put into the scrummage. Some crossing. I will like the look of this position. Christian Day needs a little bit of help. Oz, what have you found? Well, just showing how important now it is for the half-backs because the forwards are absolutely banjaxed. 
This is a really good carry up the middle by Luther Burrell. Watch how he gets over the game line, straight at Charlie Hodgson. Now, Northampton's pattern is to get those forwards around the corner and off the shoulder of Dixon, but watch them. None of them have got anything left in their legs. They're all done for, they're all jogging. So now it's your decision of your uh, nine and 10 how to play because Foden out there is really isolated. That's when you start to get wide penalties on turnovers against you. So they've got to be really careful. You can't go to your standard patterns of play. Your nine and 10 have to really take control. Sort that out, get that right. Reform now, let's go, Saracens. Let's go, come on. Rhys Gill on this side. Let's go. Really difficult scrummager. Those wily old school will make it very Six. difficult for Mercy. You can see there he's just driving through, driving through, and wins the penalty. Great work from the Saracens pack, and they celebrate accordingly. Backs running across the pitch to try to congratulate their men who've done that job. I wonder how closely they've looked at the uh, aspects of extra time, because just constantly matching penalty for penalty won't win it for Saracens, because they're a try behind. So I wonder if somebody will come on and tell Charlie Hodgson at some stage, if there's three points there, three points here, at some stage they're going to have to go for the try. Good was asking the referee about that at the start of this little period, but I doubt that too many of them will necessarily have studied the uh, the law book. Yeah, I, I disagree with Austin a, a little bit. You you want to take every opportunity because the last thing that um, Saracens want is Northampton getting that extra point, six points ahead, and then you really are in danger zone. Yeah, I'm not saying in this situation, but I'm saying as this carries on, if they go kick for kick, at some stage they're going to have to make a decision. Charlie Hodgson has done his job for now, matching Stephen Miner from the tee. Great man to have in your ranks at a time like this, so experienced. His 14th season in the top flight. And the man, of course, who's won the Premiership with the Sale Sharks a few years back. Hip off load from Good, giving Ashton a little bit of space. Given that an almighty thump. It's a great kick. He's chased it himself. Foden had enough time to. But it's a big result for Ashton. He's got the yardage, he's also got the put in. Just looks up. Gets the roll of the ball exactly how he wants it. And now they're inside the Northampton half with the put into the line out. The ability to attack. They've shortened the numbers. They put Vunapola and Brown out into midfield. Barrett's there as well. And Ashton floating around behind Charlie Hodgson. Nice pick up from Wigglesworth. Hodgson inside ball for Ashton. That's trademark Ashton. Carving through. Wiles wants it. Cuts back infield. Swarming cover defence from Northampton. Just about does the job. Going the extra mile now, but Saracens pour forwards. Hodgson, Ray, shattered bodies out there. Jackson Ray for the line. Check, check, check. Just JP. short by the looks of things. Check, check, check for the offside. Johnston is waiting over it. JP Doyle wants to check this. I think we should have played that on. JP. Yeah. Can it was the checking for the obstruction, JP, yeah, earlier like to, on. Yeah. yeah. Before we check the try yes or no, can you check Saracen's ace? Did he take out a tackler? To okay. create the gap. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. So it's one of Paula, did he take yeah, out? Yeah, he did. I've just been clipping it up. He runs straight into him. You can take a look at it if you want. Jackson Ray will also have his intervention ruled upon by Graham Hughes in a moment or two. We saw, saw the benefit of Jackson Ray when they brought him on instead of Berger because he can stay up in the tackle. But is it Bonapola who makes it a one-on-one -on -one tackle instead of a two-on-one? Yeah, that's obstruction for me. 
Yeah, you see that. Yeah. Oh, this will show you a better angle of how much he takes him out of the front, angle. Okay. Yeah, eight yeah, in front of him. Yeah. It's obstruction. He goes back. So there will be no try. Just want to give your player a chance. Relax. Just for a minute. The whitewash was hoving into view for Jackson Ray. Sammy Manoa, who can influence things no further. Ten minutes each way in this extra time period. We have a player down. And the stretch is coming on, which means it's probably going to be a, a long delay. Players need to use this time wisely, keep their focus, but get the fluid back on. Good to see the player sitting up. It's Alex Waller. Penalty to you guys. Using the pit side concussion assessment, which means he'll get time for the doctors to take him away. You can see the point of impact there. Doctors can take him away, assess him outside of the eyes of 80,000 people in the stadium, and make sure he makes the right decision. Corbusiero back on. Well, it's not a bad well, trade, is it? England international, Lions prop back on the field. Alex Waller with a nasty shiner. And the Saints. The beneficiaries of the ruling by JP Doyle that Billy Vunapola blocked Sam Dickinson, allowing the space for Ashton to slice through. Christian Day, nasty one for Dixon. Burrell is going to be caught here. Three men on him. Saracens try to hold him up in the choke tackle. Dixon. Ashton knew that was coming. That may well roll a tiny bit too far. Dropout time. Fitness really comes to the fore at a moment like this, Ben. No you remember how you, were, how you were feeling at no these kind of moments in Australia that night? Well, you can see the, the forwards out. They're trying to conserve enough energy that when they're required to make a tackle or make a burst to clear someone out, it's there. There's no point running around aimlessly chasing kicks. But they've also got to keep the things that make Northampton and Saracen's defence so strong, and that is their kick chase. So it's Wilson. getting at the right time to do it. Sorry, Dickinson on the no, ball now. Eight. so safe and assessing all the options before setting off into his opposite number Foden a clever player that looks good very much like the, the Saracens on board computer it's the line deep cross field for Wiles and PC's there Falls for Wilson. Saracens have stolen it. Rhys Gill has come away with the ball. Turnover over possession in a very handy part of the pitch, but being harassed by Luther Burrell. Oh, that has gone close. Forward. That was close, Ali. Burrell came right through the middle. Barrett's down injured now, holding his calf. That's half time. In the extra period. Still, they are level pegging at 17 points apiece. This is the the moment that wasn't quite for Luther Burrell. And that was the last act of the first half of extra time. 17 points all. Northampton have scored two tries to Saracens one. So, if it does remain locked on the scoreboard. After the next 10 minutes, 
Northampton will be the winners. What's being said in the middle of these huddles right here, Ben? Is it all about clarity of thought? Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, it's the basics of actually getting all the fluid on board, making sure you can see how Barrett's just cramped up there. Master Hargreaves having a lot to say about don't let your tiredness get in the way of your ambitions and your dreams. Just put everything into this. You probably won't be talking to the England players, but I'm sure to everyone else will be saying you've got four months to recover from this game. Sorry, three months to recover from this game. Just give everything, leave nothing to chance, nothing on the field. Keep being reminded of the, the phrase that our guest Sean Edwards made so many times in advance of the match. There is no tomorrow for these players here. They have to make sure that whatever they give, they make sure it is everything. And then they can wake up safe in the knowledge that they couldn't have done anything more to affect the outcome. I think that's the bigger chat. That's what they're saying to, to the whole group. Amongst the leadership group, the likes of Hodgson and Myler on the Northampton side, the scrum halves, the, the number eights, they're probably talking about how they can get their most potent ball carriers into space, how they can create something that might just unlock the defence and maybe not create a try, but create that much panic in the opposition defence as they scramble. But they get the three-point opportunity. So, Brian Barrett back up on his feet. He's a warrior. He will go to the final whistle. You can be fairly sure about that. Difficult moment this for the coaches, isn't it? Unable to affect the outcome in any in any way, shape or form. Time to go to the well once more then. Ten more minutes of extra time. Saracens need to come up with the goods because of it. Stays locked on the scoreboard, Northampton will be crowned champions. Dickinson drives into Jackson Ray, who came so close in that first period of extra time. George North looking to put a little bit of heat on Billy Vunapola. Tom Stevenson is on for Ken PC. the Saints bench, the PC brothers reunited. There's Tom Stevenson, just 20 years old, making a name for himself this season. He's only played five times in the Premiership, but a very talented player, part of the victorious England Junior World Championship side. Ritz and Borthwick combining again. The old partnership, Ashton on the inside, bottled up nicely by Corbusiero. Hey, winger, stop that. Brits got it away and again to Billy Villapola. Offloading from Saracens hooker has been stunningly good this afternoon. Hudson again looking to inject the pace. It's been knocked forwards and there's a penalty. That's the point I'm making about getting your strike runners, your most dynamic runners into position. And Brits here will have told Wunderpol, come with me, I'll try and force my hands through the contact and get the ball in behind the defence for you. And he does that, and as I said, causes panic amongst the Northampton defence, and they give away the penalty. He stuck his hand out, he knows the story. So the deliberate knockdown, allowing Charlie Hodgson a shot at goal. Alex Waller keen to return. Patched up for the moment. Spritz's ability to use the footwork to stand the defenders up, make them think twice about committing to the tackle, but then drive his arms through the contact and then pop the ball up. can hardly bear to watch. This is a guy that's delivered time and again for them and for Sale and for England. 
And this time, he has squeezed it through. Saracens leading by three points. Seven and a half minutes left. But as it stands, three would be enough for Northampton to take the spoils. So Saracens will want to keep piling on the pressure, putting them down with field position. Keep Marner away from pinching it at the last minute. Fascinating swings of the pendulum. The, the pendulum of momentum. And now it's very much in the arms of Northampton to come up with something to take us still further. Wilson. Monstrous kick. Taken well by Wigglesworth. That's the 22 metre line in the Saracens half. Gill takes it nice and tight. Dowson, full of running, off the bench and determined to make it count this afternoon. Led the title, uh, led the charge in the Amlin Cup final last Friday against Bath as Myler goes high again. Good, just never looks like dropping those. North not putting an awful lot of pressure on him. Use it. Kicked by seven. Hodgson under pressure. Dixon did well to get right up in his face. And it's directly into touch. And that's because of the pressure applied by the scrum half. I'll tell you what, cool head from Myler as well to ensure that they got the yardage. Now leaving that one foot over the touchline, just guaranteeing he gets this opportunity to attack. See, Dixon's dropped back, shortened the line out, and they've lost it. He's both with disrupting operations, and he's done a fabulous job for his club. Wigglesworth again, north underneath it. Very well shackled by Brits. Wilson, no one out wide. Not too many options. I believe when a polar is towards the bottom of his tank of petrol, I would suggest right now. <laughs> I should think the fact that that's just collapsed. Be a spot on. I think we need a refill. He's struggling, he's cramping. And he has been asked to do an awful lot over the last couple of weeks. So important to the Saris cause. Still only 21 years old. Such a destructive ball carrier. Here comes Jamie George. On in place of Brits. Who has had a startlingly good match. Brits has stayed. I think it's one of Polo who's going. So one of those two will play in the back row. You'd think usually that would be Brits, but because of... George having a bit more of a full tank. They might swap roles. So keep an eye on who is where as Dickinson gathers it in. Kelly Brown will go to eight. Jamie George goes on to the blind side, we understand. Four and a half minutes left to play. Here's Waller again. Stevenson. Doing well, the youngster. Hartley driving it up. One of these two sides is going to be absolutely heartbroken at the end of this. They have given everything they've got. Burrell threatening again and going wide to Courtney Laws. Chris Wiles is there. Laws is still moving. It's tied in extra defender so well there, Courtney Laws. Northampton have numbers out here, can they use it? Accuracy needed in the pass. Stevenson, oh, floated one for Foden. Hartley, it's all they can do to make these passes out wide. Day for North. 
Can't do anything with three Saracens on top the of it. The work rate of Ashton having stepped in to get back out and make that tackle on North. Myler, Wood, they've got to come away with something here. They need a penalty at worst. Foden looks to go on the outside. Bosch is equal to it. And then the ball is loose. Now it's been given to Northampton. Knocked on by Saracens. Scrum in a very threatening position. This is the time. And you just see lots of players who are minds are telling them, there's space there, I can go there, and their bodies are just saying, no, you can't. George North just stood on the touchline calling for a potential crossfield kick if this comes out. Hands on head. Signalling to Myler, but it's got to get out of the scrum first. And all that work Dorian West has done with his front row charges and the extra tight game time Alex Wallace had this year because of Corbusiero's injury. But he's got to move a big old immovable object in front of him and James Johnson. Yeah, there'll be a message coming on here from the coaching staff of Northampton. Big opportunity. First point of call is let's get a penalty from this scrum. Who'd be a coach? Two and a half minutes on the clock. Potentially the most significant scrummage of the Northampton season. Yeah, good refereeing, just saying I'm not going to let the ball come in until we're totally set, so no silliness before. Sarri's with a big shove, Dickinson controlling but under pressure. Still moving, not been held. Dixon, Myler, Burrell, carving through. Myler again, Waller, all hands on deck for Saracens. Myler's not even looking at the drop goal yet, he wants to try. Lewis carries it forwards. He has been at the heart of everything good this afternoon. Hartley takes the contact and then is rumble backwards he's in a perfect Jeremy position George. now he's in a perfect slot this is the right angle if you want to drop a goal off your right foot he doesn't want it though he's going again he's playing forward he looks to have enough space but Northampton have determined to drive it a little bit further forwards here's Laws once more well, does he think the penalty is a safer option and does he think his forwards can milk one from this Saracens defensive effort need to ensure that they stay on their feet themselves and don't give away a penalty Still they drive, Dixon, Myler, Burrell, takes man and ball. Surely the drop goal has to be the option here, does Stephen Myler even know that that would be enough? Out it comes again, here is Myler. Dickinson, shattered bodies, digging so, so deep right now. Just over a minute left. Saints are right where they want to be, but why is Myler not back in the pocket? He's sending them forward now, he's sending them in front of him. Give him some protection. They just need to be careful that they don't give away a penalty for going off their feet. Trying to look after this ball. Hartley issuing the instructions. A calm head in the cauldron out there. And he's the... Rob Skipper who drives it for the forwards. Mercy gathers round. Tom Wood is there. And Wood it is who drives onwards. Dickinson wrapped up in the top numbers now on the left. Dowson. Saracens defending as if their lives depend upon it. The Wolf Pack is at its finest right now. Myler still not back in the pocket. I think he thinks they need a try. Maybe they'll get one. Burrell, so, so close. Another inch, they're there. Northampton are claiming the try. Dylan Hartley is celebrating. Jim Mallander hardly dared let himself celebrate. They think they've got it. 
what an end to the season. Unbelievable. It'll be tight when you see there's so many bodies in and around the ball. Yep. Try yes or no. Thank you very much. There you go, Graham. There's one for the end of the season for you. Then you can go to the beach. George North just raced to the touchline just in case they get a penalty here. But Oh, that's a try. There's his hand. That looks like a try to me. How did it get there is the only question. You can't play it on the floor. Are we sure it's over the line? On the line? I think it's over the line, at least on it. There it is. It's placed. Has it touched the whitewash? I'm not sure you can give that. It's really tight, and there's, it's not. Oh, hang on. Hold on, that's a try. There is the best angle he's had. You still can't tell whether it's touched the whitewash. I think you can. I think you can see his left hand over the ball. He drives through the middle. That is a fiendishly difficult one. I think the angle we saw just prior to that, right at the end of the play, shows that his, his hand's on the line. And the fact that one of the Saracens players dives in may indicate that they thought it was over the line too. This is such a tough decision. We think it's Luther Burrell, by the way, who's doing this. Excuse me, Alex Waller. And it's grounded. Saints fans all around Twickenham are celebrating every time they see the ball grounded, but where is the line in relation to the ball? You've got to leave, keep it rolling on, keep it going, keep it going. Keep it going. I think it's a try. It's incredibly tough to give, but I think it's a try. JP. Okay, great. I, I can't tell from that. Either. I'm saying it's on the line. You may award the try. Okay, we need to the line. You may award the try. Northampton will be kings of England. Alex Waller is the hero. And the Saints have reached the Holy Grail. Nearly 30 years of waiting is over. What a dramatic finish. It couldn't have gone any further. Northampton throwing off the shackles and reaching the promised land. Guys, it's been an amazing game, so many unbelievable performances, but for me, the guy that has carried Northampton here, carried them all the way through with his kicking, his little kicks in behind, or a Viva Premiership final man of the match, it's Stephen Myler. A stunning match. You couldn't ask for more drama. And Alex Waller off the bench in the final, it is a fitting finish. He has had a superb season. And spare a thought for Saracens now. Empty-handed after a stellar campaign. They have set the pace throughout. But now they have nothing to show for it. Yeah. Two major finals, and they've come up just, just short. Oh, absolutely, and think back to the game, the disallowed try when the TMO intervened. And then another TMO decision right at the end that could have gone either way, let's be fair. Fantastic season for Saracens. But they'll take no heart from that. And they'll be the most difficult summer of all of their lives. Unbelievable endeavour from Saracens. I just thought back a few years ago to when they defended Leicester. They kept them out for 10 minutes. And for a moment there, but for six inches, maybe two inches on the whitewash, it could well have been theirs this year as well. An amazing fight back by the Saudis men.
gut-wrenching for Saracens, not the way that Steve Borthwick wanted to finish his 16-year career, but they have given every last drop. And Northampton, finally, after 26 years of trying, this is the one they really wanted. It's in the bag. Northampton are the champions of English rugby. I think fitting as well that these two produced a game of that intensity when they've been far and away the most intense sides throughout the year. We've seen some great battles between them in the regular season. And some of the hits that were going in have shaken Twicken into the court. Well, it has been a squad effort. Tom Wood, of course, got them into this position with that epic finish in the semi-final against the Leicester Tigers. Their bogey team, the team that they had to throw off their back. And they did it in wonderful fashion and they have completed the job today. Jack Berger has been immense all season. Sarri's no doubt will rebuild and they will go again. Sara is with our Aviva Premiership Man of the Match. I am indeed. Well, Stephen, where do we start? Let's just say by, by calling you Aviva Premiership Champions for the first time in this proud club's history. Sum up what that means to you as a group of players. Uh, I'm not really sure at the moment. Uh, it's hard to take in. Uh, Strange game, strange finish. Probably didn't deserve to be a winner. I think it was pretty level. But uh, amazing feeling. So proud of the lads. So proud of everybody associated with the club. The fans have been absolutely amazing all year. Uh, oh yeah, I don't know what to say. It was tight. It was intense. It was physical. But the character, tenacity, and resolve shown by you guys today was absolutely immense. Yeah, it was. We knew we knew it was going to take that against Saracens there quite rightly finished top of the, the league this season. Heineken Cup finalists, uh, they're not mugs, they're a very good team. And we knew we'd have to, to bounce back when we went behind. And um, we did that, we stuck in there, and it was to and fro, and uh, I'm just glad it was us that got over the line at the end. After 23 rounds, 80 minutes, 14 all, heading into extra time, what goes through the mind of a player at that stage? Oh, you just got to get your breath back. Uh, see what we can improve on, come up with a plan and just try and cling on. Um, I think all the boys are blowing after that. It's uh, the first time I've gone to extra time in a game, so uh, it's unfortunate that someone has to lose, but I'm over the moon that we've won. It's an amazing feeling. And just quickly, Stephen, from a personal level, you've had a fantastic season, nerves of steel out there again today. Try and sum up for me the last nine months for you personally. Yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, had a bit of consistency of selection and been trying to lead the team as best I can and, and get the best out of them. We're a very talented, talented squad. I think we've got the strongest squad that we've assembled in, in my time at the club. And it's, a, it's a pleasure to be a part of that and I'm, I'm just trying to contribute by doing my job. So you've had a fantastic season. You can see what it means to the fans. You can see what it means to you with the players. Um, and I'd like to ask Rebecca Baker now for Viva Premiership to give you the Man of the Match award and the Peter Zekin medal. Congratulations to Stephen Myler and to Northampton Saints. What about the man who came up with that priceless intervention? Alex Waller is with Martin Bayfield. Well, Alex Waller is just enjoying a bit of a hug with one of his front row partners. Alex will just drag you away. You're battered, you're bruised. That cut on your eye is not going to feel so bad tomorrow morning, is it? No, no, it makes it all worth it now. I mean, uh, fair play to Surrey. I mean, it was, it was probably one of the most ferocious games I've played in. And Fitness-wise, in the extra half, it really, you know, really took its toll. But I think uh, just over the moon with the, with the win, and oh, it was tough. But the boys, it, was, it looked tough. You got involved right at the death there. So important during that extra time, were you allowing your eye just to sneak up to the clock, thinking, "Come on, give us a bit more time." I mean, yeah, one eye's always on the clock. You just got to make sure you got enough time. And if you get it in the death like that, I knew I got it. I didn't know if the cameras had seen it, but oh, it's a great feeling, man. Some of the clubs never done before, and oh, the boys over them. That's important that you've done something that no other Saints player has done. Congratulations, well done. That is what it's all about. And Northampton will soon have their great big paws on it.
perhaps the most famous day in the club's long history, certainly since that day in the year 2000 when they lifted the Heineken Cup so memorably. And a word, I think, at, at this moment, Ben, for the Barwell family, particularly Keith Barwell, who was the former chairman of the club, must have wondered if he'd ever see this day. And, of course, his son, Leon, uh, who is no longer with us, very sadly, but no doubt will be looking down on Twickenham, Twickenham beaming with pride. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, he struggled to find a family that's done more for our game. One of the major reasons that 80,000 people are in this stadium and we get the sort of spectacle that we have is the support that they've given to the club, their club over the years, and to the wider premiership. And I think everyone in the sport is absolutely delighted for the Barwell family. Jim Mallander enjoying the celebrations and the players waiting for the final presentation. Charlie Hodgson, disconsolate. They tried everything. They gave everything. Billy Bunapola had nothing left to give but two consecutive final disappointments for Saracens. Even big men cry. Well, absolutely, and it's good to see the emotion. He won't want the world to see it, but it just shows. You can tell by the way he plays the game, the way he reacts to every decision, how much it means to him. And hopefully he can foster that in a white shirt this summer. A lot of pride in the Northampton ranks. Jim Mallander has driven them up from the championship, let's not forget. This is his tenth final since taking charge in 2008. And he's now won five pieces of silverware. So JP Doyle is the first onto the podium, followed by Paul Dix and Wayne Barnes, his assistants. And they're all receiving their awards for their participation in the final. There's Graham Hughes, who made the big call at the end. Our television match official today. Alex King in the mix as well. Don't underestimate his significance, but. What about this man? 16 years at the coalface. A record 265th Premiership game for Steve Borthwick today. He delivered the title for the club in 2011. He couldn't quite do it today, but the ultimate team man bows out. Just saw Matt Stevens getting his medal as well there. It's such a impressive return from the troubles he had just in the peak of his career to put those behind him perform so admirably for Saracens I'm sure everyone wishes him the best of luck in the next, cha next chapter of his rugby journey Scott Pritz another fabulous display lights up every single ground that he plays on always full of adventure and trickery and all of these men have given for the cause, haven't they? There will be decisions to be made about the captaincy. Kelly Brown is amongst those who will be considered. And so too, the last man up onto the podium as well, Alistair Hargreaves. Both of those will be in the running to assume the leadership of Saracens next season. But it is their time. And they have earned it. Just as a player, he's just wanting to soak every minute of this in now. You work so hard throughout your career, and moments like this come so very rarely. Ben Foden, a try scorer. Luther Burrell fizzing all over the park. Those two will have a big assignment in all black country over the course of the next month. And Mike Haywood. The job he did in the absence of Dylan Hartley, not just today, but also through the last few weeks of the season, stepped in and produced excellent displays week by week. Stephen Myler accepting his award from 
Mark McCafferty and George North, the first bit of silverware in the Aviva Premiership for him. One of the superstars of world rugby. Also worth mentioning the Saints fans who have always been one of the best supported clubs in, in the UK. And they, for so long, wanted that Premiership crown so they could rub shoulders with the Wasps fans and the Leicester fans without that last minute. Well, you haven't won a Premiership. Now they can say they have, and boy, did they support their team admirably here at Twickenham today. There's George North, but the last two men onto the podium will be Tom Wood, who scored that brilliant try at Franklin's Gardens in the semi-final, and Dylan Hartley, for whom this is Redemption Day. Throw your mind back one year and that red card it's all changed now the moment saints have been waiting nearly three decades for crushed last year now northampton saints are the champions of england